Joining me in the studio now is Chris Wood, a Fareham councillor who has recently defected from UKIP to the Conservative Party. Well, welcome, Chris. I suppose the uh, the big question on everybody's lips is, what made you do it? Well, I was elected uh, back in 2013 to the County Council and then 2014 to the Borough Council, and both of the main reasons I was fighting for election was to, to have the Stubbington Bypass built. Um, Hampshire County Council put in £8.5 million worth of funding for that. Government should approve it in the autumn statement. So that's the real reason locally why I want to go back over to the Conservatives, because they're doing precisely what I wanted them to do. And of course, nationally, Theresa May is pushing forward with Brexit, which you know, obviously the main priority for UKIP was to leave the European Union. It's the reason I joined them. <laughs> so I'm not, I don't do opposition for opposition's sake, so I'm more than happy being back with the Conservatives. Fantastic. So something that you said there is obviously back with the Conservatives. So you've, you've made the jump once before then? Well, not as an elected member. No, I used to be a member of uh, the Conservatives back in... 2008 through to probably 2011, um, campaigned for Simon Hoare, who's now the MP for, for Dorset North up in Cardiff, and I was at university up there, and our own MP in Gosport, Caroline Dynage. And yeah, I, I, I gave up the membership in 2011, stood for UKIP in 2012, um, unsuccessfully, and then, as I say, elected 13, 14, eventually became a leader of both groups on the county and borough, and decided actually, no, I'm far better back with the Conservatives than, uh, than with UKIP. Okay, and, and again, sort of touching on that, so do you think that now that Brexit has been initiated, that UKIP's job is done, that it serves no purpose anymore, particularly where they can't seem to decide on a leader, they're having punch-ups in the European Parliament? I mean, what's your take on that? Well, this is just it. I think for the last 18 months, of the brand has become toxified after Nigel Farage went slightly too far in the general election campaign. Since then, we've had, you know, in the last couple of months since the referendum, You've had alleged fights in the European Parliament, a leader for 18 days. Uh, then obviously the, the party's in £800,000 worth of debt. So by the time you get to 2019, once we've left the European Union, they'll have lost the 22 MEPs. They'll have lost the staff, the offices that go with that, and the European Union funding. That's an awful lot to bridge for a party um, which is in so much debt. And of course it could be written off if the, the largest donor actually put the money in, but they, they haven't. And now we know they'll have a new leader by the end of uh, November, um, according to the NEC today. But for me, the job is largely done. There'll still be a role on, say, anti-immigration rhetoric, particularly in the Labour areas in the north. But for the vast majority of people who were, became members when I did, you were ex-conservatives, you were pushing for the referendum to get us out of the European Union. That's been achieved. So for me, I don't see the real purpose of the party, certainly not in local government. OK. And... We spoke a little bit before we went on air just about, sort of, funny enough, Marmite. Um, so Brexit seems to already, before we've even started, uh, was, it, uh, um, was it something 50? Um, before we've even started the process to come out of Europe properly, it seems to have hit us at a very sort of low level. It's the average person that's already being hit by the drop in the pound. Um, and indeed, sort of then really highlighting the fact that most of our goods do come in from overseas now. Even brands like Marmite that were started here, we can't seem to get hold of. Well, what, what do you say to that? Well, Marmite is produced here. It's produced in Brixton, so <laughs> it's uh, not um, oh, what's the water called? Anyway, it's produced <laughs> in the United Kingdom. It certainly isn't imported. Uh, and Unilever, the owners of that brand, have tried to do exactly the same thing in Ireland. So it's not just because we've left the European Union, they've, they've tried to up their prices. And Tesco just turned around and said, no, we're not paying it. And I actually say, fair play to Tesco for not trying to be um, stitched up by Unilever, and they've now agreed a deal. The drop in the pound is actually very good for the United Kingdom anyway. Japan have tried for years to reduce their currency to make themselves more competitive, and they've been unable to do so. It may not be the most useful thing if you're looking on going on holiday to Europe or America anytime soon, but if you're a a company trying to export, it's fantastic for you because you can sell far more and get far better value for money. Okay, and then moving forward, then how do you think that this is going to benefit people in our area specifically? Down here, you can actually elect people who make laws and regulations for you. So across the whole of the United Kingdom, you're now electing people to Parliament who can make all our rules and regulations and hopefully then have further devolution down from Westminster to local government. We aren't just bringing back power from Brussels to Westminster, we want it to devolve further from Westminster to local people. Totally unsatisfactory to have 28 different member states attempting to try and create rules and regulations to suit all those 28 member states. It's never ever going to happen, particularly when you have varying economies, cultures around the whole of Europe. So for us, back here in, back in the United Kingdom, it is far, far better to actually have our rules, laws, regulations made to best suit British business. OK. And hypothetically speaking, say in the next general election, the Labour Party get into power. 
Are you going to defect and jump on board with them <laughs> instead? Well, for a start, there's no chance the Labour Party <laughs> are going to get into power with Jeremy Corbyn. Um, and nor would I ever support the Labour Party with, with that man in, in charge. Just no chance. No, OK, I, well, I, we have that on record now, so we can call you on it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I used to be a Conservative. I've always been a Conservative at heart. I was in UKIP because I wanted to leave the European Union. And now Theresa May, who I saw on Saturday in Whitney, is doing exactly that. So I'm, I'm more than happy. OK, well, uh, thank you very much for coming and talking, hopefully, honestly to us. Um, that's all we've got time for. But thank you very much for coming in.